has come to the last part of our presentation one more young dynamic uh, 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 surgeon is waiting to show his talent none other than he is from orissa dr pravin subaddi to introduce him i request dr somshila murthy good evening everyone uh, again it's my privilege to be part of this meeting and to introduce uh, my friend dr pravin subuddi and uh, interestingly pravin it's really nice to see you at this forum having last uh, met you a while ago when you came to train with us for the for dsec uh, he is the chief consultant at ruby eye hospital and he also did his cornea fellowship from arvind eye institute from madurai and he has uh, numerous publications and presentations he's also a journal reviewer and uh, he also won the first prize at the aios quiz competition in jaipur so i i hand over to you pravin and eager to listen to your case thank you madam for the kind introduction uh, can somebody tell me are my slides visible and am i audible yes your yeah. slides are visible pravin. yeah so so my, as uh, madam said my name is dr pravin sudhi and i have been in clinical practice i mean private practice for last 7 years since 2013 and I, my lasik machine i installed my lasik machine in 2015 so there are you uh, everybody will agree with the fact there are certain life changing moments or life changing cases which uh, change your thought process in approaching the case and make you realize that why did i take the decision at first hand and we need to be more careful while taking these uh, cases into uh, for surgery and for other purposes uh, when you see similar type of cases in the future and the similar thing has happened to me in this case uh, where uh, i saw it it was in the first year of my installation of plastic machine a 25 year old male came to me with a defective vision in both eyes he did not have any significant medical or a family history of keratoconus and uh, his refractive error, uh, correction was uh, minus 2 diopters and minus 3 diopters in the left eye his myopia was pretty stable for 2 uh, years and uh, pentacam showed the normal uh, parameters as it was in the first year of my installation i was little bit reluctant to perform uh, prk in these cases i was uh, more aggressive in doing uh, lasik and this is a pentacam you can see here uh the uh, the things are pretty okay in the keratometry the cornea is more regular and the anterior float and posterior float doesn't show much of any elevations only the thing is that there was a little bit of thinner packy of uh, less than 500 microns but uh, having said that uh, because uh, it was a minus 2 and a minus 3 diopters uh, having a residual stromal bed of uh, 350 microns i was th i thought that uh, it will be pretty safe for this patient to undergo a microkeratom lasik and this is the billions apart from uh, everything is normal except in the bad d in the left eye it showed little bit of suspicious uh, but otherwise other things were pretty normal the anterior float and the posterior float elevation everything was normal and even if you see the um, keratometry k1 of 42 and uh, 43 and k max of 44 doesn't show any uh, clinical signs of any form of uh, suspicion where i should not perform a lasik So I scheduled for for both eye microkeratom LASIK. Uh, I usually do a 90 micron flap, and it is the flap thickness is quite predictable in uh, Moria uh, microkeratom SBK LASIKs. Uh, and the residual stromal bed was around 350 microns, as I said. The surgery was very une uneventful, and the post surgery patient had a good, pretty good vision of 6 by 6 in both eyes. Patient did not come to me for three years, and he was doing very well for three years. Uh, later, here in 2019. Uh, uh, he came uh, to me with this picture now you can see here there is an uh, inferior steepening and uh, there is elevation in the posterior float of 36 uh, in the right eye and posterior uh, elevation of uh, around 47 in the left eye so to my utter surprise the patient which had a normal cornea before surgery and uh, post surgery after 3 years the previous the patient was fine he, did, he had 6 by 6 he told me that he was pretty good but after that he started developing uh, defective vision and there was a progressive loss of vision and this is the belin uh, embrosio or oh, you can see a uh, pretty everything is uh, red 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 and it is not a uh, rosy picture for me and because as i am in private practice as in private practice it is very difficult to handle this cases because you are answerable to them and um, uh, and uh, when i saw this picture i was little bit worried what to do next there was little bit of progression in patient uh, the had a ucb of 6 by 36 in the right eye and 5 by 16 in the left eye a very uh, highly unsatisfied patient Uh, he had a right eye refractive error of minus two with minus two. So the patient which had corrected minus two has developed again minus two. Left eye with two point five and two point five at one sixty. 
So I thought of doing some amount of uh, corneal regularization with a topoguided uh, PRK and a, and a partial fluency excel. The main aim for me is to just to regularize the cornea and not to and to prevent further progression because it, these cases may progress. Uh, I think, but uh, be, uh, be, uh, listening to the talks today, uh, most uh, Dr. Rohit Sethi has said that uh, these cases may be stable after a certain point of time and doesn't require any treatment. But still, I went ahead with this uh, topoguided PRK and CXL. The patient had some amount of uh, regular cornea with an unaided vision of 6 by 12, but still uh, not that happy, but a relative satisfaction. So the, my journey after this case, uh, I had stopped performing LASIK uh, 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 and I have, uh, instead I'm performing more frequently PRK nowadays and there is tachy is less than 500 microns. And now I have, I have uh, learned to say no to the patients whenever I see, see any suspicious cases, whenever I feel that these patients may develop any form of ectasia later on. I have uh, developed a strong uh, in my heart to say no. And I, even if there is a suspicious cases, I, I wait for a minimum period of three months and see whether there is any stability is there or not, whether there is any progression is there. And then I perform these cases. The most important thing I get, the message I would give to the audience is not to get tempted and it, uh, not to be greedy in uh, doing performing refractive surgeries. So thank you very much for the kind attention. Thank you, Praveen, for that uh, very nice presentation. Uh, I'll request Dr. Tatyal, sir. So are you there, sir? Dr. Tatyal, sir? Yeah, yeah, listening, listening. Yeah, sir. Please. I think it was a wonderful, you know, session for last uh, two and a half hours. I enjoyed every bit of this, especially the you know, case presentations by you know our uh, young people. A lot of uh, thought-provoking cases. I think that is what uh, I think this webinar was meant for, and it totally you know given us uh, so many uh, things which maybe you know has to be highlighted for a better outcome. And uh, I understand, you know, um, uh, there may be a lot, a lot number of. I think there's a lot of disturbance. Uh, Sunil ji, can you please mute everybody else, please? Yes, sir. Sorry. Is yes, it sir. better now? Yes, yes, sir. Sorry, sorry. I think there's something running with my. Uh, I think it, it is, you know, we had so many numbers of, you know, webinars on refractive surgery. Despite that, you know, we need to have more and more uh, you know, such uh, webinars where we need to discuss cases. And cases are the one which are going to give us an idea of how to improvise subsequent outcomes in our patients. And today we had a, such a wonderful cases. Uh, I believe that, you know, uh, it, it, it does matter, you know, what will be your experience or number of years you have done refractive surgery. But one case will change your th thinking process. As the last presentation by Subhidis told us, like one case changed the thought of uh, entire refractive procedure. I may be doing refractive procedure for last, you know, two decades plus, but uh, one case will change my concept, my thinking, that will make you to, you know, think in a different direction. I think that is uh, what I learned today, and it was wonderful uh, program for my entire scientific committee. And congratulations to all the presenters especially discussions, uh, you know, and I appreciate Dr. Amamurti being there. And uh, his inputs are uh, really amazing, uh, and especially, you know, whatever webinar I had opportunity to listen to him, he's uh, such an experienced person, and his uh, points are very uh, well, you uh, know, appreciated by all of us. Thank you again, uh, being Do you think at this point of time, it is what Dr. Abhijit and Dr. Rohit had presented that needs to be chip in in relation to Praveen's talk, sir? Do you yes, feel yes. that? Uh, but um, uh, it is, you know, uh, I think the requirement of time also to have such type of uh, things coming up for a future, you know, uh, safety or, or, or procedures. The safety has to be not only for patients, safety has to be for us also. So these things are required for a future, you know, we can't go with the same idea. The new thing has to come to make things more safer, especially for, uh, you know, giving a, a protocol for a right outcome for our patients. I think that's the future. So I think choosing the right patient is what is more important for yes, a particular. that's correct. And even that vitamin D thing, I appreciate that, you know, and these are the things which um, most people, we don't do it. But right. yes, we need to assess these patients uh, very, very appropriately also. And uh, it hardly matters, you know, one test and that might give you so many other information, especially if you are doing a, a surface uh, procedures. Comments from Sujata Mohan, madam. 
unmute 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 yourself i think this has been a wonderful uh, webinar and we have learnt a lot particularly you know the completely different uh, aspect of rohit's uh, presentation i think tomography is slowly on its way out and we have to look at more investigations before we take up uh, procedures and one more thought is that like rohit said we don't see that many ectasias and if i do see an ectasia in a patient who is we don't expect to have an ectasia then you have to probably find out whether the patient has any comorbidities like eye rubbing or the patient could be on uh, ocp or things like that something which could lead on to an ectasia because those are the very important things that could probably initiate an ectasia because nowadays we don't see many of them because of the strict protocols we are following and um, that's about it i think and uh, thanks for the part, uh, the wonderful opportunity and really enjoyed the whole uh, webinar thank you madam due to heavy rains and sandstorm i think uh, unfortunately dr stream salam could not able to join us it was a little bit unfortunate uh, part of us he called me at least five six times uh, please do something i want to join i want to join but still could not able to join and in the end final comments from dr ramurthy sir he's been encouraging this young budding uh, uh, refractive surgeon ramurthy sir you know I, i think it's a wonderful uh, uh, webinar and i learn every time i attend one of these the small points is not the buying of a great equipment or big uh, i mean uh, expense that uh, helps you to perform better but small bits and pieces that you pick up all along and uh, i think uh, Praveen's presentation in the end was extremely important. It's always in refractive surgery. It's always better to be safe than sorry, in the sense that you know it's not statistics which matter. But uh, these patients are coming with normal vision with just a requirement for glasses or contact lenses. In case of any doubt at all, and if you feel you may be doing something uh, which might harm the patient, just stay away. I mean, the patient can live a whole life with just glasses on. and but I, of course uh, having said that i would say that you know uh, 30, 25 years back even before we knew that hydrogenic keratophasia was a term we just used to leave behind 200 microns of corneal tissue in the bed and we must have had a flood of keratophasia if you hear all this but it has just not happened so there is a lot more to it than what we presently understand of course uh, relevant research is going on but whenever in doubt uh, play it safe and i think uh, that's the message and excellent presentations of the youngsters who came to us and i learnt a lot thank you so much finally over to our chairman scientific dr partha bishwas thank you very much uh, i think uh, you know sir um, i mean all of you staying together and <laughs> till the end that itself speaks greatly and uh, i think each one of us have learned from each other uh, the youngest to the most experienced uh, and as well as uh, what has been said uh, one thing that is very important for all of us to remember is refractive surgery is actually a mystery there are so many things that we never knew we did wrong yet nothing went wrong so everything is so mysterious and uh, the mystery to get unraveled is going to take years and years and years but the future def definitely shows that one thing after the other the nuances that have to be taken into account and it's such an evolving science it's a very very exciting and a refreshing science indeed and uh, thanks to all our seniors to, to all our uh, young colleagues who, who have made this uh, webinar a big, big success and thanks to zais who has uh, sponsored this webinar and has been a real pillar because <laughs> without finances nothing moves and uh, of course thanks to mr kripal uh, pallavi and sunil ji for uh, being the back end people and the spine and the <laughs> strength of all these webinars thank you everybody thank you all panelists thank you all chairpersons thank you speakers and the wonderful two moderators yeah they've been great <laughs> i think you know refractive surgery as said rightly said is a mystery till you perform yourself yeah. and you subsequently create more mysteries when yeah. you started performing more cases yeah thank you, sir. thank you so much thank you, thank, you, thank you very much sir thank you great. congratulations thank scientific you. committee <laughs> thank, yeah. you. thank you very much thank Kudlu you and sono great job yeah thank you yeah. great job done by dr kudlu and dr sono
Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the committee, you know, Partha keeps the committee so well knitted, you know, together. <laughs> And doesn't allow anybody to go out. <laughs> you may, be, uh, you may, be, may not be doing reflective surgery like Firoz. She has to be there uh, throughout the you know, entire two and a half. <laughs> Otherwise, we will not be there in her oculoplasty webinar. Thank you, sir. Good Very day. nice. Thank you Thank so much. Great Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good Good everyone, have a lovely weekend. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.